Well, first, let's characterize it properly. It's our law uh, in the state of Illinois. And, uh, and you know, my reaction is it'll obviously run through the court system. Uh, I signed it. it. You know, I think it's something that makes sense for just organizing the court system. So there's a lot of venue shopping going on by people who are just trying to find a friendly judge here or there. Uh, the experts that are, you know, in the two venues that have been designated uh, seem like they have uh, handled constitutional related cases more than any others and so it makes sense to me to have those cases run through. That's uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker last week uh, talking about the law that he signed uh, essentially limiting where people can sue the state of Illinois challenging constitutional rights being violated by state laws and uh, while a Madison County judge found that unconstitutional as applied in a case that Piasaw Armory brought against the state's firearm industry liability law the state tried to move that to sangamon county one of two counties out of 102 counties that's the state law says you can sue the state in. well uh the madison county judge saying that that venue limits law was unconstitutional so the state went right to the illinois supreme court and that was filed earlier this week um this while you've got the city of chicago suing glock over glock switches uh, so let's go ahead and start there before I share with you some of the conversation I had with uh, Senate Minority Leader uh, John Curran uh, with the city of Chicago announcing uh, what they say is a first in the nation kind of lawsuit they say will hold Glock accountable. So let's pull this up uh, and read through this together. This is a um, news release from the city of Chicago. It says fully automatic modified Glocks increasingly turning up at crime scenes in Chicago across the country. Over 1,100 modified Glocks recovered by Chicago police in the last two years. So the news release goes on to say the city of Chicago announcing a first of its kind lawsuit against Glock, the manufacturer of the most popular handguns in the United States, alleging that Glock's facilitating the proliferation of illegal machine guns on the streets of Chicago. The lawsuit alleges that Glock unreasonably endangers Chicagoans by manufacturing and selling the Chicago civilian markets semi-automatic pistols that can easily be converted to illegal machine guns with an auto sear, a cheap, small device commonly known as a Glock switch. The suit is the first to use Illinois' new Firearms Industry Responsibility Act passed and signed into law in 2023 to hold gun companies accountable for their conduct that endangers the public. Filed earlier today in Cook County Circuit Court, that's state court, not federal court, because this is a state law that they're using to sue Glock, not a federal law. Uh, but the lawsuit, the city says, reports that law enforcement personnel in Chicago have recovered over 1,100 Glocks that have been converted to illegal machine guns in the last two years alone in connection with a wide variety of crimes, including homicides, aggravated assaults, batteries, kidnappings, burglaries, home invasions, carjackings, and attempted robberies. The lawsuit alleges that Glock knows it could fix the problem, but refuses to do so, and the city is seeking a court order requiring Glock to cease sales of its easily converted pistols to Chicago civilians. The city also seeks penalties against Glock and damages for the harm that Glock has caused the city. The city of Chicago is encountering a deadly new frontier in the gun violence plaguing our communities because of the increase of fully automatic Glocks on our streets, said Mayor Brandon Johnson, a member of the Mayors Against Illegal Guns. Selling firearms that can easily be converted into automatic weapons makes heinous acts even more deadly. So we're doing everything we can in collaboration with others committed to ending gun violence to hold Glock accountable for putting profits over public safety. Uh, it goes on to quote a couple of other officials, uh, and it says, according to the complaints, the ease with which Glock pistols can be modified with Glock switches has gained national attention in the past few years for its unique and outsized role in worsening America's gun violence crisis. The switches are the size of a quarter and are... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, easily purchased illegally online for around $20 or manufactured at home using a 3D printer. Uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has reported a 400% increase in recoveries of illegally modified machine guns from 2020 to 2021 and a 570% increase in auto sears from 2017 to 2021 as compared to the previous five-year period. Once installed, Glock switches allow pistols to fire up to 1,200 rounds per minute, a rate as fast as or faster than many fully automatic firearms and machine guns used by the United States military. Uh, so again, you can you can go ahead and read more of that, uh, but that was filed in uh, Cook County Circuit Court using the firearms industry liability law that was um, uh, approved by the legislature last year and signed by the governor. If you search my channel, you can find all kinds of stuff 
about that particular bill. Uh, I do want to quickly, before I share some of the uh, conversation I had with um, John Curran, he is the Senate Minority Leader, uh, we're going to get an update on the um, Firearm Liability, Firearm Industry Liability Act status in federal courts where it's being challenged. But let's go ahead and hear um, back to the issue of the uh, court's limiting law, uh, where, again, Piasaw Armory uh, challenging the firearm uh, industry liability law, uh, saying that they think it's unconstitutional. The state tried to move that case to Sangamon County from Madison County, but then Madison County found it unconstitutional. Well, now it's in front of the Illinois Supreme Court. Uh, here is uh, Senate Minority Leader John Curran reacting to that. I mean, you know, Greg, this is the second of what I would, um, I, I think, are three laws that were broad over constitutional overreaches passed last year and signed into law by the governor. Um, you know, clearly we have a system. There's a appellate courts review. It goes to the uh, Illinois Supreme Court for the governor and all these judges around the, the state are duly elected by the by the. Uh, voters the citizens in their area for the for the governor to say that he does not have faith in the vast vast majority 100 or 102 counties of this state the really the faith in the voters of those counties that they're able to elect a, appropriate jurist um I, I think is really disheartening it, it is it is good to see uh uh the court's ruling and i i will note that um you know, this case is really interesting because this case could actually strike down two of the governor's initiatives from last session because the underlying case is is a suit challenging the civil liability for firearms manufacturers um, uh, that the governor signed into law. And that is another um, broad overreach um, that is uh, really questionable constitutionally. And that was brought up uh, and talked about extensively in debate. Uh, and, and that's the underlying case uh, in, in this matter in Madison County. And again, that's uh, the Piasaw Armory case uh, challenging the uh, firearm industry liability law. Uh, but uh, that was in state court, right? And you remember Thomas Mack, he, he dared the state to try to transfer it from Madison County to uh, Sangamon County. Um, and they attempted to do that. But the Madison County judge said, no, you guys can remote in down here for hearings. So I, I don't see what the problem is. This law is unconstitutional. Uh, to try to limit individuals where they can sue the state. Uh, but again, the underlying law was uh, being challenged was the firearms industry liability law. That's the same law that's being used by Chicago to challenge Glock to get them to pay and also to stop selling their popular firearms. Uh, but uh, while that's going on, uh, months ago, after the uh, firearm industry liability law was signed by the governor, you had the National Shooting Sports Foundation sue the state and that case, we got an update, actually, uh, just this week. So uh, nothing had happened in that case uh, challenging the firearm industry liability law since December 11th. But then uh, earlier this month, there was a motion uh, to uh, file a notice of supplemental authorities by the state. And then uh, on the 18th, you had uh, the judge order that defendant's motion to leave to file notice of supplemental authority is granted. The court will review and consider the supplemental authority with respect to pending motions. So uh, Stacey Yandel, and this is in the Southern District of Illinois, uh, moving forward with that case, but allowing for uh, a notice of supplemental to, to be filed uh, to, to kind of update some of the uh, uh, the court proceedings that are going on there. Uh, so again, uh, you've got a couple of different things going on here. You've got the uh, firearm industry liability law that's being challenged in federal courts and in state court. And then you've got the court venue limit law that was trying to be used in the state court case in Madison County. And the Madison County judge said you can't use the court limit law. That's unconstitutional let alone even dealing with what's going on with the firearm liability law. So now that's been appealed to the Illinois Supreme Court, the venue limit law. Uh, so now also you've got the city of Chicago uh, using the firearm industry liability law uh, to go after Glock. Uh, so while the firearm industry liability law uh, maintains challenged in federal and state court, uh, you've got Chicago moving forward trying to utilize that law uh, in order to punish Glock. Uh, but back to uh, John Curran, the Senate Minority Leader, I asked him, especially when it comes to this case challenging the court venue limit law, 
in the Supreme Court of the state of Illinois, are there still concerns that there it was a conflict of interest because Governor J.B. Pritzker, who signed this law, uh, gave two of the Supreme Court justices a million dollars each, let alone leaders of the legislative branch giving six figures to these candidates as well. Here's uh, John Kern's reaction. I, I, I think the Illinois Supreme Court will give the case a fair hearing. I do not question the integrity of the Illinois Supreme Court. And quite frankly, I don't question the integrity of the, the judicial system anywhere in the state of Illinois. It's the governor that is questioning the integrity of the judicial system in 100 of, of the 102 counties of this state. Uh, and and that is um, quite frankly, it's just wrong. You know, you need you're elected to be the chief executive of the state. You need to lead the entire state, and, and stop looking at everything from just a a Chicago or Cook County view. And, and that's clearly what the governor was doing in this instance. So, uh, Curran uh, earlier had mentioned this is uh, one of several laws that he says is unconstitutional that courts are looking at and finding unconstitutional. Another one is that law that uh, was passed to allow for the attorney general to go after crisis pregnancy centers for not offering up abortion. And you had a federal judge essentially say this is a stupid law. It's very likely unconstitutional. And then the state didn't even challenge that. They settled. And here's Curran. They settled, they settled immediately. immediately. So, so a temporary restraining order was entered. The judge said this is likely unconstitutional, uh, set the matter for a full hearing, and the state uh, just uh, caved. The governor caved uh, because it was clear to pass a law. It was so blatantly unconstitutional that crisis pregnancy centers couldn't espouse anything written or verbal that could be taken as a negative view on abortion. I mean, that's not... That's not even close. So clearly, uh, they they pass a law for press pops to put out a press release, and then immediately, as soon as it was challenged, uh, Mia culpa. Yeah, we we were wrong. Clearly, they knew what they were doing from the beginning, and that was clearly unconstitutional. And again, this is a state senate uh, minority leader John Curran. He leads the Republicans in the Illinois Senate, and asked him if this is just one in a series of laws that are being challenged on constitutional grounds. What kinds of lessons should this send to the majority Democrats at the Illinois State House? The the broad overreach, when they bring these measures up, there is no discernment in trying to take it on in a measured approach. It is constant overreaches. Uh, And quite frankly, this is a byproduct of the power that is vested in the governor and his democratic allies and uh and they are there's no respect for the minority rights and there's quite frankly no respect for the constitutional rights of the citizens of the state uh and and that needs to change so um you know as we look at this legislative session i hope they take some uh cautionary um lessons from really what is uh mounting to be a very uh poor scorecard Uh, from what they enacted last year. So again, uh, Senate Minority Leader John Curran there. Appreciate uh, him taking the time with me yesterday to uh, discuss that and other issues. State legislature's back in session today, and they've got a bunch of hearings and press conferences, and they've got until May 31st to pass a balanced budget with simple majorities, the governor wanting to spend $52.7 billion. But the budget's not the only thing. They could pass all kinds of other legislation. So we'll take a look at what goes on today, tomorrow with Bishop on Air. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Appreciate you guys being here each and every weekday morning. We'll be back at it. Follow me on X, follow me on Facebook, and be sure to uh, catch the show live here with Bishop on Air.